Hi. I'm uh, here to tell you about why I made this leap into ed tech. It's probably not a surprise that education in the US is not improving. Uh, this data that generates this report is, comes from one data point per student per year. Um, but what got me really fired up about this is the data report is, 2011, is 2011. It's two years after the last data point. It takes the federal government two years to roll up the data from all the states. So what does this tell us? First, they should replace their data transport layer with FedEx. <laughs> and, but what it really tells us is they're not using feedback and data at all. I see this knowing firsthand what you can do with tens of terabytes of data every day streaming in and using the data to develop a deep understanding of your users and rapidly iterating with continuous feedback to make improvements. So when I look at this, I see a pattern. The pattern is they keep not using data and they keep not getting better. I know how to fix this. So if we're going to bring data to education, we have to know what to measure. And the most important thing to measure is the student, the learner. That's the center of education processes. The way we measure a student today is with standardized tests that look at your skills and understanding. That's missing the whole big picture. There's so many more complexities about the learner. We have cognitive abilities, different task planning, working memory. We also have multiple intelligences, different learning styles. Some of us are visual learners, some of us are kinesthetic. And we have different family backgrounds, and we have different personalities. We're maybe more or less cooperative or uh, more or less persistent. And all these are important to understand and measure when we, if we want to improve education. How do we know? Uh, we use models like this in social gaming to understand motivation. We use them in social networks to recommend people you may know, and books you might like. This is a kind of personalization that we could use in education. How do we know that's a good idea? We have data about that. John Hottie spent 25 years looking at all of the great innovations that have been happening in schools. And he did, studied 800 meta-analyses, which covered over 50,000 studies and over 200 million students. There's a whole range of things he looked at. Homework and class time, exercise, teacher development. And out of the, all the things he looked at, the summary of the report is that the most important factor affecting student achievement is feedback. And there are two, two elements to that. One is you have to use data. The way we collect data about students on a more frequent basis is formative assessments. They're tests we can give on a more frequent basis, and then using the results of that to tailor instruction to each student, to give them what they need when they need it. These, are, these aren't just good ideas. These are ideas that have been used by schools that doubled student performance. It's the equivalent of moving a fourth grader through the fourth and fifth grade material in one school year. Alan Auden came to similar results when he studied the top performing schools in Washington State and Wisconsin. That The top performing schools that doubled performance had a similar set of strategies that used feedback. These are ideas worth spreading, but they're time consuming. And not every teacher has the tools or the time to do this. Imagine if we could use technology to spread these ideas to every school in the country. We can use our cloud-hosted technology to lower the barriers and make these kind of techniques available, and we can use big data to really understand the student and give them what they need. We have more and more digital devices in the classroom. It gives us an opportunity to collect click streams, rich data streams, to build that student model and then use that student model to create personalized recommendations and develop early warning flags. These are algorithms that we already know how to use, same algorithms we'd use to recommend books, the algorithms that Mike just talked about for personalized policing in Santa Cruz. These are uh, tools we have now. We can apply them to education. Big data gives us better personalization and actionable results at scale. I'm here to tell you that big data is coming to education. The barriers are coming down. With more devices, more, more interest in policies, making schools need to be accountable for results, 
that Gates Foundation and Junio and other companies are building infrastructure and open standards to enable more innovation. Just like the LAMP stack enabled the internet revolution, these pieces of infrastructure and standards are going to make it easier for entrepreneurs like you to get into education and make an impact. There's also increasing amounts of capital available. Public and private investors are realizing the necessity for, for developing an educated workforce with the, with the skills we need for the 21st century. And I'd like to ask you to think about if you've been wondering how you can use your superpowers for good, think about what role you can play in reinventing education. We can do this. <laughs>